Bloomberg Markets. So XPO Logistics is splitting its trucking and logistics businesses into two separate publicly traded companies. This after um, basically looking at strategic alternatives, looking for buyers, and then deciding that this was the right route. The market seems to like the idea. The share price has rallied really quite significantly over the last few months. Uh, we welcome now Chairman and CEO Brad Jacobs. Brad, you, you've looked at various options. You look potentially at selling the business. Why is, is this split the right way to go? Um, good morning. So we've looked all year long at what would be the best ways to improve the business operationally and what would be the best way to create significant equity value. As we disclosed back in January, put a press release out, we thought about selling or spinning four of our five business units and we looked at every permutation. And at the end of the year here, we came to the conclusion that having a nice clean separation between our transportation business, which is everything that goes on a truck, and our contract logistics business, which is everything that happens in a warehouse, is the best way operationally and financially to create significant value. It's, it, it has simplicity, it's easy to understand, we can focus more, we can have better capital allocation, we have a better equity uh, currency in order to do acquisitions, to track talent. And from a financial perspective, investors will be able to see much more clearly the extremely attractive financial results that we have in those businesses. And hopefully give us a valuation that's much closer to or above our competitors, many of whom we have better, we have better numbers. So, Brad, the elephant in the room, though, is uh, the debt and the leverage. How are you going to get both of these companies to investment grade? Well, I don't want to get ahead of the rating agencies. We're in discussions with them. What I can tell you is we will have both of them be investment grade. Maybe one will be ahead of the other, but in due course, both of them will be investment grade. That's a irrevocable commitment that we're making because that's what we heard. We heard talking to our stakeholders, make the company more simple, which clearly by dividing it into we have, and become investment grade. So from a operational point of view, separating them two is great. From a financial perspective, we should be able to get a much higher multiple if we're more pure plays. Brad, do you think though that you will take a different view in the future of gearing companies up? Um, you came into the crisis with quite a lot of leverage. And I'm wondering if you've learned lessons from this that actually maybe that isn't the desirable way to work your way forward. I'm not so sure I'd agree with the concept of the word a lot of leverage. We have a little over three times leverage, three times EBITDA. Uh, if we didn't do anything, if we had not done the split and just ran the business and didn't do any acquisitions, we would have grown the EBITDA, taken the free cash flow, the debt would have applied that to debt reduction. And we've been down to a little over two times EBITDA just by doing that. So I'm very comfortable with the leverage that we've had, but it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the market thinks. And the market clearly rewards companies with lower leverage, mm -hmm. and that's a fact. So we're, we're, you know, there's a saying, I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase something like, don't argue with reality because reality always wins. So the market, the reality of the market is we need lower leverage, so that's what we're going to do. Um, there is a, a conversation that's uh, percolating here, Brad, that um, you'll have additional costs because the two companies, when you have a conglomerate, you can really streamline some costs. There's worries that that will change now. Um, the bargaining power uh, with other companies will uh, be more limited. Walk us through how you're going to manage that. Well, there'll, there'll be some, some dis-synergies, 10 or $20 million of, of cost dis because we're going to need two separate boards and we're going to have to add some executives. Uh, we're going to have to add a, a rock star CFO for, for NUCO. We're going to have to have a rock star head of strategy and investor relations. So there's some key positions we have to fill, and there'll be some cost involved in that. But overall, we should be able to offset most all of that with efficiencies by being focused as a pure play. Just briefly on this subject as well, because I think it's an interesting one. You have been a serial consolidator. Do you think you will continue to be a serial consolidator? Do you think that the world no longer rewards consolidation and, and kind of trying to get some of those costs out of the business? I've been in, uh, a, a consolidator. You know, I've, the teams I've led, we've done over 500 acquisitions over the decades and we've created tons of value for shareholders. Uh, so I believe in the value of M&A when it's done correctly and when it's not just buying something, but it's also having a clear plan and executing on that plan to optimize it after you buy it. So I, I, I have seen firsthand tremendous value created from m and I'm not opposed to M&A. 
In the last few years, we've only done one deal for five years, and it's not even close yet. It's a Agua deal in, in the UK. So we're not a one trick pony. We can do M&A. We can also grow the business operationally. We've grown the business without any acquisitions in the four years between 2016, 2019, by $2 billion of revenue growth, all organically. And we've grown the EBITDA. We grew it from $1.1 billion to $1.6 billion in that same period. So we added $500 million of EBITDA organically without acquisition. So I believe in the power of acquisitions. I also believe in the power of running a business very tightly. Mm -hmm. Brad, before we let you go, um, you have operations you know, across 17 different countries. I'd love to know your role, exposure, and capacity uh, for vaccine distribution. Well, we, we've been active in uh, vaccines in the last few weeks, and we're very honored to do that. Our Expedite business has been transporting uh, vaccines in temperature control vehicles, which is very critical. And all the producers, all the, the pharma companies producing the vaccines, they're all customers of ours. Where we're really participating is not where the FedEx, UPS, DHL is going to do, which is the, the, the heavy lifting. We're participating in the secondary market. So syringes, uh, saline, styrofoam packaging, dry ice, uh, refrigerants, temperature controlled packaging materials, all of which we have a lot of expertise in. We have a lot of customers who need to transport all that and that's what we're doing. So, but you know, as much as we're going to profit from it, and that's great for the shareholders, and it's a beautiful thing. It's really, really inspiring and gives us a lot of positive self-image as a company that we're participating in one of the most humanitarian, fantastic things that humans have ever done. All right, Brad, we will leave it there. Brad Jacobs, XPO Logistics CEO, thank you very much. Great to talk to you. This is Bloomberg.